Hello everyone and welcome back. My name is Zek and today we're going to be going over events and listeners in SQL Alchemy. So if you want to automatically trigger actions when certain database operations occur, you're in the right place. So let's get started. So here we're going to take a look into a simplified version of the database session lifecycle. So it starts with our session beginning. And then once you make all the modifications you need to do in the code, it basically queues it up. So whenever we call a session.flush or a session.commit, it'll go ahead and trigger a flush. So the flush will start and then it will go ahead and execute any of the SQL performing these database operations like an insert, update, or a delete. And then we'll finish the flush updating any references and then finally save it to the database by committing it and then ending the session. And if at any point an error happens, we want to catch that and then handle that accordingly with a session.rollback. We can take a look at some of the database events. These events are just triggered at different points during our session, and we can attach a listener, which is a function that we create on our own, to run at certain points in this lifecycle. So if you want to create some kind of function that will always run after some SQL has been executed, you can attach that, and then it will run every single time after an execute happens. So here we have a before flush, which is starting the flush. Then we have our database operation. So whether it's an insert, update, or delete, it will emit one of these events. Then we have a before execute, which happens right before our statement gets executed. Then we have an after execute, which happens right after the statement gets executed. Then we have an after insert, after update, and after delete, signifying that the insert, update, or delete has finished. Then after this, it goes ahead and completes the flush, so that it emits an after flush event. And SQL Alchemy does have another event being triggered called after flush post exec, which is an event after the flush has been completed even after the after flush event has been completed. And everything in blue here relates back to the session.flush, which you've seen in SQL Alchemy before. Then we have this session.commit in the orange. And once we call that after our session.flush, it'll then perform a before commit event and an after commit event. And then if at any point an error happens here and we catch it and we roll it back, it'll then emit an after rollback event. There are some more events that are not listed here, but you can go check those out in the docs. I will provide some links in the description below where you can view all the different kinds of events that SQL Alchemy supports. But this is the main flow of the event lifecycle. If you were to just do a session.commit and don't flush at all, it does change a little bit. It'll first start with a before commit event and then go into the before flush, before database operation, before execute, after execute after database operation, after the flush is done, completely after the flush is done, and then after the commit is done. And then at any point in this, if an error occurs and we catch it and roll it back, it'll then emit an after rollback event. If you just perform a query on the database with no update, insert, or delete operations at all, it will only trigger a before execute event and an after execute event. And that'll go for session.query, session.execute, and session.scaler. And then if an error happens and you catch it and you roll it back, it'll trigger an after rollback of it. So first up, we'll go ahead and get started with our setup. So in here, I have all the imports at the top, and then I'm creating the engine using SQLite and putting it all into memory. Then we have a base class that's inheriting from declarative base, giving it an ID. So all of our models that inherit from this base class will have an ID by default. Then we have our users class with a name and an email. Then we go ahead and create all of our tables and then create a session for it. So from here, we'll start with the listen function from SQL Alchemy events. Let's say we want to create a function that will log whenever a user is added into our database. We can do this by creating a function called insert user listener. You can name this whatever you want. It really doesn't matter in the context we're using this, but it does require three parameters. The first parameter is the mapper, and this is an instance of the mapper class. It represents the object relational mapping between a Python class and a database table. Then we have the connection, and this represents the database connection being used for the current operation. This allows you to execute raw SQL queries and interact directly with the database. And then we have our target. Our target is the instance of the model we are using. So in this case, it is the user. If you had a different model, like say a post model, your target would then be of type post instead of type user. The event does come straight from SQL Alchemy when we import event. So we call event.listen. The first argument we'll pass in is the target. And this is the object to which the event listener is attached to and listening to. So in this case, the user model. The second argument is the kind of event we are listening to. 
In this case, we are doing a before insert. So before a new row is added into our user's table, it'll fire this before insert event. And we can run this function whenever that event gets fired. So each time we insert a new user into our database, we will print the user's name. So here I've got an example. We're going to say 4x in ranges 1 to 10. We'll create a user for each value of x that we have. And then we'll add it to our session and then go ahead and commit it at the end. So we'll go ahead and run this. And we can see it did print out inserting user here. So we've successfully added an event listener to our database. Awesome. If you wanted to add another event for your specific listener to listen to, you can copy and paste the line and just change the event name to whatever else you want it to listen to. So in this case, I have a before update. And whenever I go ahead and run this, I get the same output. And this is just because I haven't done anything to trigger a before update. Since all I've done here is just add the user. But we can also turn this into a decorator by moving the event listeners up here, removing the functions from the arguments, and then change this listen to listens underscore four. And last but not least, adding the at symbols at the beginning. So with this, if we go ahead and execute it again, we do get the same output showing that it does the exact same thing. And we can choose between event.listen and event.listens4 based on what you prefer. So here we'll look into another example. Let's say we want to log out when a user's email changes in our database. So first up, I've changed this for loop into just one user being created. Then we create an event listener for listens for the before update. So before an update actually happens, we're going to go ahead and run this function. So we want to get the current email of the user we're going to update or the old email. So we can do that by creating a statement. We will have to use text in SQL Alchemy 2.0 to have a raw SQL string. And we can import text at the top from SQL Alchemy. We'll go ahead and just put text in there. Then we'll go and do connection.scalar with our statement. And then we're passing a dictionary of user ID to target ID. This key in the dictionary just needs to match this value up here in the statement. And this value in the statement is starting with a colon. And then we'll say our new email is to target.email. Target is just referencing our updated values that we are trying to fully process. So we're saying if the old email does not equal the new email, we'll go ahead and print out the email for the user is changing. So after we have this set up, we'll go ahead and perform a query on our user to get them by the user equals user one, which is the same as what we have up here. Then we'll go and commit it to the database. So if we go ahead and run this function, we can see that the email did change for user one to user updated at example.com which is what we have right here. And before our user's email was user underscore one at example.com. Let's look into another example of using event listeners. So let's say we have a blog post table that has a title and a slug. And whenever a new blog post gets added to our table, we will automatically create a slug for the blog post. And a slug is just a series of strings with dashes in between them instead of spaces. And generally they're all lowercase. So we'll go ahead and create a function called generate slug with the parameters that we need. We will attach two event listeners to this function. We will do a before insert and a before update. So whenever a new entry is getting added to our database or when an entry is getting updated, it will automatically generate and or update the slug for us. So if you happen to change the title of your blog post, the slug will be updated accordingly. So in this case, we're creating a blog post, giving it the title, decorators are super cool, adding it to our session and committing, and then we'll go ahead and print out the slug. So we'll go ahead and run this, and we can see it did generate the slug, decorators are super cool. If we were to go ahead and change the post title again to something else, let's say like subscribe to Zectech, go ahead and commit it and print out the slug again, it will go ahead and update the slug for us. So we can go ahead and run this file, and we can see the first slug is decorators are super cool, which is what we have right here from this title. And then after we go ahead and update the title to subscribe to Zectech, it went ahead and updated the slug to subscribe to Zectech. So next up, we'll look into the contains function for an event listener. And this is used to check if a listener function is already registered for a specific event on a target. And we can use event.contains to avoid duplicate listeners. And so we can do this by calling event.contains, the target, which is our user class, then the event type, so before insert, and then the function name. And this will return a Boolean true or false if it's already existing or if it's not existing yet. So if we move our decorator up here, we're saying if there isn't an event that has this specific listener for this before insert on our user table, 
then we'll go ahead and add it. Otherwise, we'll say it already exists and don't do anything. So we'll go ahead and run this code, and we can see the listener was added. If I were to copy this and paste this again here, I'll go ahead and run this again, and we'll see that the listener already exists. Next, we'll look into the remove function, which is used to remove a listener function from an event on a specific target. We can also use events.remove to remove a listener that is no longer needed. So we can remove this insert user listener so it won't be used anymore. And we can do this by saying event.remove, the target, which is our user, the specific type of event, and the function name. So we'll go ahead and run this code again. And we can see it says that the listener was added, but since we removed it, it's no longer there, not running this print statement anymore. If I were to comment out this code, run it again, we now have inserting user as user one. If you are interested more to see how these events are used in action, I've created a lifecycle file here, and it has the setup of a user, but the name is a unique constraint. So when we scroll down, there is a decorator function here to log the event name, which we're using down here in the events.listens. So here I've set up a bunch of other events that we can listen to. We can listen to other things besides model objects. We can listen to session objects, and we can also listen to engine objects. And here I've got some transactions. The first one we're gonna perform is an insert operation. So whenever we run this file, we can see this section and understand what's happening here. Then we have an update with a flush and a commit. Then we have another update with just a flush. And then we have a delete operation with a flush and a commit. And then we will have a rollback operation. It will create an exception, we'll catch it, and then roll back the database. So we'll go ahead and run this. And here we can see for this insert operation, these are all the events that were triggered. And it goes the before flush, before insert, before execute, after execute, after insert, after flush, after flush post exec, before commit, after commit. If we move on to the update, you'll see something kind of interesting here. That for the update, it's the same thing, except there's two before and after executes here. And the reason for this is an SQL alchemy. It will perform a query, so we'll execute some SQL to verify that the row exists in the database table, and then it will go ahead and update it, and the rest of it is the same. If we move on to the next function here, we can scroll down to the next update operation, it is the same except there is no commit here. If we move on to the delete operation, then we can see all the events triggered from a delete operation. And then for this last set of code here, Whenever we try to make two users with the same name, even though there's a unique constraint, it does perform all the before events up until it executes the code. Then it throws an error and we trigger a rollback since we caught the error and did it here. Remember to use events for tasks that should be triggered automatically, like auditing, logging, or any other kind of data validation. Thank you so much for watching. If you found this video helpful, leave a like, subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one.